a case that is really relatively new on our radar. There's a lot of really messed up pieces to it uh, already. Uh, talking about the uh, death, the murder of 13-year-old Madeline Soto. Uh, been talking quite a bit about mom and her partner. Uh, but another piece to this that's been very messed up uh, is the outrage over the sheriff sharing a photo of her corpse on Instagram. You know, what do you, are you on Instagram? Cause I am. I am. So the things that I share mostly, I've taken up uh, baking sourdough bread. I've got two adorable little kitty. Well, they're not little anymore, but cats. Um, so I, that's kind of what I do on, on Instagram. That's kind of my thing. Like fun stuff. Like, mm -hmm. Hey, look at this new pair of teaks. I just got shoes. Mm -hmm. It's a little different than here's a dead fucking body. Well, and it wasn't done on purpose. That's the thing. It was done. It was he had posted a photo of, I believe, another event that uh, something was going on. And the caption reflected that. And then on the next photo was the corpse picture. Like, oops, well, if you're, oops, if you you're not two. good at social media, if you're not good at at picking your thumbnails, you know, well, getting the right photo, maybe don't do it. Well, the other big question is why on earth was this uh, body photo on a device that was being used for his personal social media? That mm -hmm. That is another huge, huge thing. The Osceola County uh, Sheriff's Office uh, is under fire following the controversial sharing of that photo believed to depict the lifeless body of 13-year-old Madeline Soto on social media. Uh, Sheriff Marcos Lopez ignited the controversy when he allegedly posted the disturbing image on his personal Instagram page just hours after Soto's body was discovered in a rural area outside St. Cloud. Lopez claimed the post was accidental. The public condemnation was very swift, many questioning the appropriateness and ethics of sharing. Clearly, he didn't intend to do it. Now, that doesn't dismiss any of this, though. In a separate incident, the sheriff's executive director... Nerva Rodriguez added fuel to the fire by posting a selfie with the suspect Stephen Stearns during a perp walk, accompanied by a caption that drew further criticism. These actions directly violate the sheriff's own social media policy, which explicitly prohibits the dissemination of information from ongoing criminal investigations, including photographs, as well as making statements about the guilt or innocence of any suspect. Um, so it was like a double whammy of... Now, that one, I believe, was more intentional that one mm -hmm. um law enforcement expert Randy nelson expressed dismay at the violations emphasizing the importance of adhering to established policies and procedures i'm wondering if they had any it makes you look at the leadership i mean that's that's all one can do and once again it goes back to transparency and accountability nelson embarked reflecting the broader concerns regarding the conduct of the sheriff's office uh, compounding the controversy is the uh, revelation that the Osceola uh, county Sheriff's Office was not the lead agency investigating Soto's death, raising questions about why mm -hmm. the graphic photo was in Sheriff Lopez's possession and who took it. Despite inquiries, the Sheriff's Office has remained tight-lipped on these matters, fueling further speculation and frustration. Um, well, that's, a, that's a big issue there, Tony, because if the Osceola, or whatever, Osceola County Sheriff's Office wasn't that lead agency, they shouldn't have had that photo to begin with. They shouldn't have, um, or if they did have it, it should be on a secure drive. Uh, it should not be on the sheriff's cell phone. You should never have evidence photos from a case uh, on your cell phone. I just had a big conversation with Bob Mata about this, and it'll be a segment that airs uh, next week here on the podcast, uh, asking, you know, how, what is the protocol on this sort of thing? And no, you should never be taking photos on your cell phone of a crime scene, period. Uh, it can, you can easily violate many laws that way as well. Uh, and depending on if the photo, I don't know how they found um, Madeline. Uh, if I don't know if she was naked. I don't know what the situation was. If she wasn't clothed, that'd be considered child pornography as well. So if that's on your device, that's highly illegal. Uh, evidence or not. Uh, if it's on your personal device and not in an evidence storage area uh, with the uh, with the police department. 
uh, it's it's shocking. There, there, there's very few reasons why one would have to why one would have those on their phone for legitimate reasons. One would be if you're like the first officer to a scene and you're concerned about contamination of the evidence, like say it's about to storm and it's outside and there's a footprint and you're like and the, your your the rest of your crew is not there yet to to, to gather the evidence or take pictures and you're just going to do what you can. That's understandable, but then you would get him off of your device. It wouldn't still remain there for accidentally posting onto Instagram. Uh, those sort of things just should never, ever be in a place where this sort of thing should happen. There should be clear protocol that these do not get put on personal devices. They shouldn't be on something where it's going to accidentally be clicked on to get onto Instagram, uh, but clearly those protocols aren't being followed uh, in the Osceola County Sheriff's office very well. Yeah. You know, it takes me back to, and it, kind of a different situation, but Kobe Bryant, when he died in the helicopter accident, mm -hmm. th those photos were everywhere. Shit. I even saw one. There was what um, of, of the accident like, and body parts. Oh, I somebody on part. scene took photos and shared them. Well, as soon as you share that with somebody, it's over. You don't know yeah, where, yeah, yeah. where they're going to go. That you know, I never saw those. I don't want to see those. Yeah, don't. It's not. It's not. And I'm sure that they're harder to find now. But within 24 hours of that accident, they were all over the web. Oh, God. And I can't unsee it. it to me, it's like faces of death from the 80s. <laughs> yeah, I still have that. Like you bring that up. And I remember Rotten.com. Uh, oh, when, yeah. in, you know, in the nineties, when the internet was, you know, kind of becoming a thing and it was like, there's all sorts of crazy things on the internet. And that was one of the websites. And I remember there was, it was just like the most gruesome photos and God, there was one of like somebody that got run over by a train. I will oh. never unsee that one. It's still scarred into my mind about 30 years later. Mm -hmm. Um, it's but traumatic. it is it just, uh, Again, this is some, I mean, is this going to affect the trial? Is this going to have any sort of impact, you know, when this gets there, if there ever is a trial or what happens? It it, likely not. It, it, I don't think it's going to really do a whole hell of a lot, but it certainly is cause for looking into that department uh, and their, their policies and their procedures. And there should be, there should be some accountability here. It can't just be, oops, we're sorry. We're never going to speak of it again which seems to be kind of what they're trying to do right now. Uh, just, you know, it, it just, it, it adds another layer of what the fuck. I mean, and look at, we've spent this entire time talking about not even the victim. No, you know, <laughs> there's a whole other side to this case that we're not even talking. I mean, the whole case is insane in itself. I yeah. mean, and, and that's, you can, on our social media, you can see all of that and on everywhere. Uh, on YouTube and all that, there's a lot going on surrounding the mother, surrounding the partner, the dad, who, or not the dad, but the the rapist, basically, uh, who's been arrested and charged with that crime as of right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and as of the second, I think they're still trying to figure out who knew what when. And it doesn't look very favorable for... Uh, the mother, uh, her stories have been conflicting left and right. Uh, she's in, in some interviews saying that we dropped her off and others or in the same interview later, she says it was just him who dropped him off. Uh, then she has an account of uh, seeing her the night before. And that was the last time she saw her. And then the next interview, she saw her in the morning. And then it was, oh, we she was on uh, surveillance footage when they dropped her off. She was never on surveillance footage because she's never been dropped off. Just how soon before the mom gets nailed to? Uh, by the time this airs, probably. Probably. I'm. I'm really. I. I don't know. I mean, I think it's only a matter of time. Quite honestly, uh, as of right now, innocent, no charges, not supposedly a suspect right now. Um, I don't know if she had anything to do with it, uh, or if she was just complicit, or if uh, who know uh, who who the hell knows. But I, I'm sorry, she looks extremely questionable uh, in terms of her not having her stories remotely straight on multiple 
uh, parts of of this case and what's going on with her daughter. Not to mention, she seems to have zero emotion about her daughter being missing. It was like, well, I don't think they should be. I don't think they're going to find anything over there. They're by the river right now, but I don't think they're going to find anything. I think it makes your voice go really high on cue when like it's an emotional question and pretends to cry or been dabs the non-existent tears. Uh, and then they make their voice crack a little bit when it seems like I should feel emotion. I, my question is, how do you not feel emotion? Right. I guess exactly. Th- that's the, she knew what happened. It, it, well, maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. I don't know. I mean, but even if, even if you, even if you did know what happened, how, how do you have zero emotion? It's your daughter. And she's, and, yeah. and at that point in time, missing. But if you already know the answer to that question and you're more so, everyone's concerned for your daughter and she's missing. And that's the narrative that we're all looking at as this was ongoing. Um, but when you, uh, when you already know the answer to that question, you're more concerned about covering your ass. So that's why there's no real tears. That's why there's no red eyes. That's why you're so matter of fact that you're talking about it. Like you're ordering you know, fucking pizza. yeah, pizza. Like, Oh my, it, it was just so cold. Yeah. It, it was, it's mind boggling. If you want to watch it was that, empty, yeah, empty, completely empty. Uh, if you want to watch uh, that uh, interview uh, and our dissection of it, I did another I did a big video on it today, dissecting it. It's on uh, YouTube, uh, on the Hidden Killers podcast uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and it's, uh, God, uh, yeah, I don't have words for it. But uh, there's a lot wrong with this case, a lot. Sick of the ads? We are too. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.